The Trial of Allegiance was a new expansion for Hearts of Iron 4. We've already talked about it. You know about it. And the result is, yeah, mostly negative. So it went from mixed to negative to mostly negative. We're in a really bad way here. What went wrong? And how do we fix the primary reason why a lot of people are complaining why it's gone wrong? So they fall into three camps. Camp number one is the DLC is too expensive. It's about $15 roughly, depending on where you live in the world. And I think they believe it should be around about $9.99, which is roughly the price what Battle of the Bosporus was. Camp number two is they don't think the content is very good. I'm fall more into that camp. I think some of the focus trees lack creativity and they all seem to fall into the same category of unifying South America and coring it, which I don't have no problem with that. That's actually kind of fun. But the fact that they all seem to have this same conclusion is just a little bit lacking creativity. And then there's the third group. I think this is probably the smallest group. And it's the one Paradox have hit at the most aggressively. And that is the group saying that this expansion affects power creep more than anything. Power creep? Power creep? What is power creep? Power creep is a common challenge in multiplayer games, especially those that involve progression, customization, and updates. It refers to the situation where new content or features make older ones obsolete or irrelevant, creating an imbalance and loss of diversity in the game. So as an example as Canada, one of the oldest DLCs for Hearts of Iron 4, Together for Victory, which came out in 2016, we have focuses that do this, give political power. I mean, it's not bad. However, some of the bonuses you get from the South American trees are obviously a lot better. And this one, for instance, 35 days, which gives one advisor. Uh, doesn't assign the advisor for it, he just lets you give access to them. And back in the day, some of these focuses were a lot worse, but they've actually buffed them. Paradox did once upon a time return to these focuses and buff them. For instance, this one just gives some infrastructure and nothing else, but now they've given you railways as well as access to an industrial concern that buffs trains. And this one only used to give you uh, railways as well, but now it gives you civilian factories. So Paradox are listening. Thanks, Paradox. Anyway, regardless of that, old expansions and old focus paths give kind of lukewarm bonuses. However, the newer ones tend to give really OP bonuses. An example was Argentina, the Union of National Fascista. And it gave these the Spirit of the Conquistadors, which gave an attack bonus of 20%. But this one only says 6%. Why? What's happened? Here we go. This is the dev diary that made those changes, which I believe, even though those two dev diaries weren't released at the same time, this came off the bat, which was talked about on the previous dev diary, discussing the problems with Trial of Allegiance. And then they released this patch. Oh, I hope you're sitting down, guys, because this, for me, hurt. This stung, okay? So basically, all the shared South American paths, which were all the military paths, which were all, let's have a look, all these ones here on the right side. That's what he's talking about when he says South America shared. So all of these. And as you can see here, 95% of them are big, fat nerfs. Oh, my Lord. Now, there are some buffs in here as well. But as you can probably see here, a good 90-95% of them are nerfs. So this patch was a massive nerf. And it was, once again, to summarize, was to address power creep. It's important to note, too, the reason why I think this was a wrong decision is because we've released a new expansion. We want the community to be excited about it. We want the community to buy this expansion. But at the same time, we're making the most interesting parts of this expansion less interesting by nerfing them. And I feel like by nerfing some of these OP bonus, they make them less fun. And I don't know about you guys, but I want more fun, not less fun. So one reoccurring theme that you do actually find with these uh, focuses is you end up unifying South America. I, as I mentioned earlier, probably not very creative, but it is a doable thing. And you do end up having the ability to core South America. I think coring should be something that should be limited. You not have many options to do it. For instance, let's say Germany coring Alsace-Lorraine. Or if you're coring very large amounts of land, the requirement should be quite tricky to achieve. So it's not just something that's given to you on a beautiful silver platter. And unfortunately, when it comes down to any formable South American nation, which all of them have, the ability to core is unbelievably cheap. Way, way, way too cheap. So I'll just give a quick example. So we go for America do Sol, which apparently is Portuguese, not Spanish. <laughs> if you know, you know, okay? And then we'll annex Paraguay. And then we're going to get a load of political power. And there you go now. These two states within South America, I have the ability to core this state and this state. And there are no set requirements within this state that I need. All I need is 20 political power and 30 days. Feels like so unbelievably low. There's no actual challenge of progression baked in with it. Here's my solution. You need compliance. 
I would say 25 or 30 compliance is required minimum before you can hit this button. And then to top that off as well, this should take a, a very large amount of time. Think about what's happening here. You're nationalizing Paraguay Paraguayans and making them Brazilian and accepting within your armed forces and using their factories as if they were Brazilian. In that circumstance, that should take quite a lot of time to assimilate these people to that said need. I'm talking like 90 days, 180 days. We're literally talking three months to six months to be able to do this. I guess in all fairness, it's not just about the requirements, but it's also kind of also about proportionally based upon the size of the nation that you are are you gaining a lot are you potentially gaining too much does that make sense in brief i think it should require a compliance it should require double the amount of political power and probably triple of the amount of time it's an investment for the player and then it has a potential payoff in a short medium long term with it not being excessively long where it's basically the end of the game before you can call them challenge with a said reward. So next up, I made a mention of the Argentinian national spirit, which was called Spirit of the Conquistadors. And I highlight it because it's just unbelievably OP. It used to give 20% attack bonus for everything. Everything. So that gives a bonus to breakthrough. That gives a bonus to soft attack and hard attack. Universal gives attack a bonus, which is unbelievably high compared to everything in the game. However, to take away that bite, the sting of having to deal with just nerfing it beyond belief from 20% down to 6%, I think you should set a time requirement. So for instance, I would recommend the Spirit of the Conquistadors expire after two years. It's a reasonable amount of time. It's a very large proportion of a Hoi 4 game. It gives you an opportunity to expand within that set period. Or maybe have the ability to have it as a decision that you can press it and activate it when you want it. So when you're about to do your little rampage against the world, you can activate it and then take advantage of it for that two-year period. But when the two-year period is over, it expires and you lose all the bonuses. At least then you take advantage of the full power of the DLC. You get to enjoy it. You have the control of when you want to use it. And you don't have to feel sour about, well, getting an unbelievably brutal nerf to not take advantage of all those extra stats. And that applies to so many of these bonuses, which I'll hand on heart, I'll admit, hands up in the air. I'm going to say some of these bonuses are probably too strong and they do need to be nerfed. I agree. But why, instead of nerfing them beyond belief, dropping them down by 60 or 70% of the power, why don't you just limit the amount of time you can use it for? Next up, another way of fixing power creep is moving some of these OP bonuses down to the bottom of the focus tree. If they activate in the very, very late game in 1943, 44, 45, there's not as much time to take advantage of their stats and their bonuses to kind of ruin the balance of the game. So for instance, if the Spirit of the Conquistadors was all underneath South American Unity, sure you could get it in 1941, but at least at that point, the kind of the world has stabilized a little bit and the war has started and there's a lot of divisions, there's a lot of firepower, there's a lot of stats. And plus, I think it's very rewarding to have a focus tree to have a big bonus at the very bottom. It is like a runway. That's the way I describe focus tree. The spirit of the Conquistadors was so unbelievably broken, it probably would have been better off with only still having it for two years as well. So comb combining that as well as the time restriction would make it feel rewarding, but not make it feel too overly OP. And this bunch of focuses a part of this expansion that apply to in that certain circumstance. I only zone in on the Conquistadors because obviously that's one that losing my mind and i do think i like that one too got a cool name too conquistador that's sweet right once again it feels rewarding i get a nice payoff and i don't have to feel sour about being nerfed to oblivion any suggestions to fix power creep please comment below do you agree or disagree with me tell me what you agree or disagree with you i love comments where you guys disagree with me but please say in the comment section what you actually disagree with you don't just say dave bad hate dave dave not good tell me why let's have a conversation Guys, if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to like and to subscribe. And if you want more content, give this one a click right here.